गुड मॉर्निंग फ्रेंड्स दिस दिस इज़ आवर सिक्स्थ लेक्चर एंड मच अवेटेड लेक्चर आई मच सॉर्ट आफ्टर लेक्चर आल्सो करंट अफेयर्स असीमित को बांधने जैसा है बट प्रसन्ना सर थैंकफुली डू इट फॉर ऑल ऑफ अस आई एम श्योर यू मस्ट हैव रिसीव्ड रेडी रेक्नर फ्रॉम संकल्प इट इज प्रिपेयर बाय प्रसन्ना सर ओनली Prasanna sir is 1975 batch IAS officer, superannuated as additional chief secretary Haryana, and he has been director for uh, president of uh, HIPA also, and was instrumental in format formulating many uh, public administration policies, which you must have read in your uh, public administration PRCs uh, as your optional. and he is also we are fortunate to have him as uh, in sankal as president of our mother body jan kalyan shiksha samiti and uh, he mentors he is also head of uh, our forum called vivekanand forum which is a forum for the working bureaucrats which once all of you get selected so you how to work more efficiently for the nation Prasanna sir has started that, taken an initiative, and it's in third year now. So from uh, inception to selection, Prasanna sir is mentoring uh, bureaucrats for almost ten years with Sankalp. Now we are fortunate to have him, and uh, I think we can start this session. So question answer to this session, may I put a question? I'll 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 mention that. Okay. Okay. Okay, sir. Then we can start. Okay. okay. good morning all my dear friends and uh, merry christmas to all of you i'm very happy to address you all on this very important topic of current affairs i'm i'll not be covering the entire gamut of current affairs because there are some others also doing it uh, we have divided the current affairs into a number of categories uh, international current affairs i think in the class has already been uh, taken then uh, economic affairs has already been covered we will have one class on uh, cop 28 and climate change uh, because that is a, that is in itself a big topic so that we will have on saturday uh, i am and there, there will be another class on constitutional and legal issues where the three new laws will be covered and uh, specifically they will be covered and maybe other topics also i am going to talk to you the balance of it the remainder of current affairs i will be covering today but uh, i will be restricting it to national current affairs because international current affairs have already been covered uh, even national current affairs i am sure i will not be able to go through the entire list of current affairs topics in less than 2 hours time available to us today so what we will do is we i will try to give you an idea about how current affairs questions are asked in the civil service of interview in upsc and how you can prepare for that so be since uh, all the topics i will not be able to cover i will cover a few sample topics i have a list of topics i will uh, start with that now uh, you can have a look at it and uh, there are 10 topics but i will not be able to cover all the 10 because my experience in the past few years is that uh, by the time we cover four or five topics our time would be over so you can select the topics from this list of 10 and in uh, type it out in your chat box so it is something like a digital voting you can do that and then uh, i will uh, i'll select the main topics but a one topic i will be covering without your mentioning it that is india versus bharat because that is uh, that i am going to cover as a sample uh there i will tell you in what manner questions can come in this civil services interview on similar lines 
I will like you to ask questions on the other topics also and if possible answer the questions because this is going to be not a class but a discussion of current affairs and all of you are much more familiar with the current affairs than I am though of course I have prepared the current affairs ready reckoner and uh, shared it with you uh, you are the ones who are preparing for the examination and naturally you will be much more up to date about current affairs than I am of course the I have the advantage of nearly 50 years that separates you and me. That advantage I have. But otherwise, you are very well prepared. I don't have to teach you current affairs. And I don't have any intention of teaching current affairs because current affairs is a topic which cannot be taught. So we will have a discussion. We will think about the possible questions. You can, you can use the chat box to uh, share your questions. You can also uh, switch on your microphone and give the answers to those questions. That, that would be the format of the class, or rather discussion. So let me have a look at the chat box. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll wait for the chat box for a little more. Uh, now let I will uh, give you some idea about the type of questions that can come in civil service examination, taking an example of the India versus Bharat debate. I will mo I may not be reading the entire uh, slide. Please go through the slide yourself. Please read it yourself so that it saves a lot of time. And all, all these things are there in my current affairs ready reckoner and all of you are familiar with it also. Uh, the entire debate started in recent times with the uh, invitation uh, sent by the President of India, where it was mentioned that Draupadi Murmu, the President of Bharat. And that created, uh, I won't say controversy, but a debate that why Bharat, why not India, as we have been doing it, and particularly when we write in English, we have al always been using the term India. So why Bharat in English language? Some of the points you have to keep in mind while, while answering questions related to the India versus Bharat debate, I will mention here. Uh, one is that the our preamble of the, our constitution, the English version starts with we the people of India. It doesn't say we the people of Bharat. But of course, the Hindi translation is Bharat. Then in part one of the constitution, it says India, that is Bharat, shall be a union of states. And the Hindi version says Bharat, Arthat, India, Rajyunga, Sanghoga. So both these words have been used. In English version, India, is, India comes first, Bharat comes later. In Hindi version, Bharat comes first and India follows. We have had several names for India in the past. Bharat is actually an abbreviation of the term Bharat Varsha, which, which uh, denotes the, uh, the land of the successors of Bharat. It has also been referred to as Jambudiv in some of our literature, especially the uh, Ashoka, uh, Ashoka era edicts. It is mentioned as Jambudweep. Jambudweep, it means the land of... Actually, we are not a deep, we are not an island, but uh, it was mentioned as a, an island, island of Jamun trees. There is also another story which says that uh, Fahian, when he came to India, he described Indians as people of Jambudweep. And he also said that uh, it is a land of Jamun and the people also look like their faces are also similar to Jamun. Maybe because he came from a land where the people look like uh, when they have yellow colored faces. So when he came here, he found slightly darker faces. So he might have likened it to Jamun. But uh, the Jambudi word is there even before Fahian came. And the other terms used are Hindustan and Hind. 
uh, the, when the Persians came to India, they called it Hindustan because they knew that Sindhu Nadi was there and uh, Indians, our people, our people called it Sindhu. But since they could not pronounce the word, the letter S properly, they called it Hind, Hindu. Instead of Sindhu, it became Hindu. And it uh, and since the uh, Stan is a use, of course, it is a Sanskrit uh, word, but Stan is also used by the Persians when they came to India because there are many other Stan here, Afghanistan, Kazakhstan, Tajikistan, etc., and even Pakistan. So they called it Hindustan and shortened it to Hind. And when the word Hind traveled to Europe, the Greek called it Ind because they could not pronounce the aspirant letter H. Since they could not pronounce it as Hind, they called it Ind. And Ind gradually evolved into India. And when the Britishers came to India, they brought that name to India. In fact, India is not a name created by Indians. It was imported to India. And in recent times, a very unfortunate development is that uh, we divide our country into India and Bharat. The urban elite being referred to as India and the rural poor as Bharat. I remember last year, uh, around this time in December itself, December 2022, there was a, an international festival, art festival, in cultural festival in New Delhi, and near the uh, India Gate. There, there the theme was called India meets Bharat. So, officially also, the two terms are considered separate, though they mean the same thing. And the issue of naming the country was discussed in the Constituent Assembly, but there was no consensus on the name. Many names were discussed. If you can, uh, if you have the time, you can go through the uh, Constitutional Assembly debates, especially the speech of uh, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar on 18 September 1949. Uh, if you Google it, you can easily get it. Otherwise, you can go to the website of the Parliament, and all the documents are available there. You can download the uh, talk of. Uh, address of Dr. Ambedkar on 18 September 1949. That will give an idea about how the debate started. And ultimately, uh, Ambedkar moved a resolution uh, saying that let us call it India, that is Bharat. And that is how uh, the name came. Now, uh, I will stop here for the time being and then let us see I, I'll give you a sample list of questions. I, this was these questions just came to my mind. Uh, this is not sacrosanct. This is not a complete list. You can think about more questions also. See that these are the sample questions which I could think of. Some of them. Please have a look at it. And if you think there are other questions also. Please share with us. Now I'm. I'll have a look at the chat box by, during the time you go through the sample questions.
Okay, I got a rough idea about the type of question, type of uh, topics you want to discuss. Uh, can anybody share any more question? Any questions other than this? Prabhupati, am I audible? Yes, sir, you are audible. Okay. Because I I am using the slide and I note. Okay. Okay, since there are uh, no, only one suggestion is their impact on youth. Yes, it can be. Okay, what what would be the future uh, generation want to call India? What to call, whether they would prefer to call uh, it as Bharat or India? Uh, these questions would be there. Now, my, I, my idea is not to tell you all the questions. This is an exercise for you. That when Whenever you read any topic, be, whenever you prepare any topic for uh, your civil service interview, please try to visualize as many questions as you can. So this is, this is an exercise which I am giving as an example. That this is how you have to work out questions. And once the questions are in your mind, it is not difficult to get the answers because you can Google it. You can look at uh, your uh, notebooks and look at the current affairs ready reckoner. You will definitely get the answer. But more important thing is that you ask questions. But unless you ask the questions, your coverage of current affairs will not be complete. And in fact, I am not talking uh, only about current affairs. Anything which you have written in your DAG, please ask at least 10 questions on each topic. Each word you have written in your DAG, try to visualize a few questions on that topic. Yesterday in the group mock, I had mentioned it. So some of you might have attended the group mock also. Uh, I'll be doing the group mock again in the coming days. So there also we will uh, try to focus on this very important point that is civil service interview is nothing but DAF plus current affairs. If you are familiar with every word you have written in current I mean the DAF and also you are familiar with current affairs, nobody can Uh, uh, you know, nobody can spoil your civil service interview. You will definitely score very high marks if you uh, are familiar with all the terms you have written in the and also familiar with current affairs. And that is how you have to prepare. Okay, there is one question that uh, changing the name from India to Bharat is another example of Hindi imposition. Okay, can anybody answer this question? I don't. I, I don't want to answer it now. If any one of you can uh, switch on your microphone and answer this question, do you think? Uh, okay, I, Anjali, but sir, I'm from Tamil Nadu, sir, and in okay, Tamil okay. also we okay. call yeah, Bharata Mundi, sir. Okay, yes, you call it Bharatam. It's not yes, not, not exactly Bharat, but Bharatam is South yes, Indian. Similar only, sir. Yes. So, it is not exactly a Hindi imposition. In fact, Bharat is not a Hindi word. Bharat is a Sanskrit word. So, when we say Bharat, we are not imposing Hindi. Most of the Indian languages use Bharat as the name for India. Sir, may I so speak? Yes. Okay. Yes, please. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, uh, answering to this question, uh, the word Bharat, which is mentioned in Rig Veda, and which is referred to the land between Himalaya to the Indian Ocean, yes, yes, that yes. is referred as a Bharat. Yes, and it has no connotation. Uh, it is a geographical expression rather than 
any cultural expression in fact uh, that question would come uh, because i have mentioned also it here the question number what is it? Uh, yeah, question number eight mentioned here is yeah. India a geography. In fact, many people think that India is a geographical entity and Bharat is a cultural entity. But this is a vice versa. But along with the history and the yeah. culture, the historical okay. aspect, now it became a uh, geographical as well as cultural identity. Yeah, you can say that because since Bharat has been mentioned in Urgueda and the definition is there in Urgueda, you can say that Bharat is also the land between Himalaya and the Indian Ocean. ocean. Uh, and, but, but, the, but Indus is the land of the uh, Sindhu River. That yes, way, sir. Indus is also, India, India is also a geographical construct. So, uh, and I am not giving the answers. You please think about the answers. So you, I am, I am not putting words into your mouth. You can think about it and give a, an appropriate answer uh, depending on the type of question asked. Okay, so I'm not suggesting anything. You can, you uh, if you, but my only request is that please don't sound too radical in your expression. Don't go to either extreme and try to take a middle path. Try not to criticize yes. the government. Try not to sound too pessimistic, because these these are the uh, characteristics of a civil servant. If you, you know, a civil servant is always positive minded. A civil service is, civil servant is always optimistic, and civil servant wants to uh, help the country and its people. So we we must we should never sound pessimistic or uh, uh, critical of the country that should that should be avoided other than that whatever uh, analysis you do of the question and answer there, that will be perfectly acceptable so please think about these questions and try to come up with uh, acceptable answers hello sir yes uh, may i just say that uh, may, may i answer in this way that uh, like if the question will be asked to me that what is your opinion? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, like uh, uh, whether you will go with India or whether we will go with Bharat. Then yes. in that case, can I just answer in this way that, sir, uh, uh, I don't have any uh, problem with any of this name, India or Bharat, because for me, the, uh, the uh, expression uh, the cultural expression, the identity of the land is much more important than its name. Can I answer in this way, sir? Yes, you can. And I, as, I, as I told you, there is no correct and incorrect answer to this question. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, yes, now, I, I, let me also uh, talk about uh, what Anamika has written here. India is, uh, sir, India is limited to area around Sindhu. That is a question she has asked. We have Brahmaputra, Krishna, etc. What was the motivation of constituent assembly to adopt India? Is it a name given by other people? No, it is a, uh, it's a historical thing that uh, when the Britishers came to India and uh, not only Britishers, the uh, other foreigners, other Western countries, they came to India the British called their organization East India Company, British East India Company. The French called it French East India Company. Uh, the Dutch called it Dutch East India Company. All of them used in the word India. Even the uh, people from, from came from Denmark. They couldn't do much about uh, uh, occupying uh, no, space, space in India. But they also had a company called the Danish East India Company. Portuguese had an East India Company. So the, the word is India was imported to India by the Europeans. And since India, it, the country was called India for over 200 years, the Constituent Assembly might have thought that let us not uh, throw away that name, at least let us use it in English, English language. In Hindi language and in the other Indian languages, the corresponding Indian names can be used. And that is why they called it India, that is Bharat. And in Hindi, they called it Bharat, that is India. So if there is a translation of the constitution in any other language, the word used for India in that language will prevail. 
so we have no quarrel with the word india as an english word as an imported word as an english word there is no quarrel about india and we have been living with it we have been using it so uh, let us not let us not have a quarrel with it let us only say that it is acceptable to us but we will prefer an indian word and a, not an imported word that should be uh, you know uh to satisfy the uh, uh, panel that is what i feel but uh, i am not suggesting any answer from you yes india is a colonial legacy because it was india was not there before the europeans came here the word used was either hindustan or bharat the word india was not there Hindustan was used by the Persians, the uh, Mughal emperor, um, they also used the term Hindustan. And Hindustan is used even now. In Hindi, when we talk, we call it not necessarily as Bharat, we say Hindustan. Uh, good morning, sir. Good morning, yes. Oh, that Egta. Yes, sir. sir uh, my question is that that uh, after changing the name to uh, India from Bharat, will there be any proposal to change the name of Indian Ocean to Bharat Ocean? Yes, this is a very interesting question. In fact, uh, the, uh, how do you call it in, uh, you are uh, you're a Hindi speaking person, how do you call it in Hindi? Sir, uh, Bharatiya Samudra is something like that. Mm -hmm. Sir, yes, Hind Mahasagar. Sir, we call it Hind Mahasagar. It is, it, is, it, is, it is Hind Mahasagar, yes. Yes, sir. So, the word Hind is there. The word Hind is there, which is very much uh, uh, of Indian origin. The uh, word, uh, because, you know, Persians, Persians brought it, but uh, it became part of Indian culture. So, Hind and Hindustan <laughs> have been accepted by the people of India. Sir, but then there there would not be any quarrel with that. The, maybe so, the, because it uh, the Persians called it the people of people beyond Sindhu River. So sir, we, are, if, we are people beyond Sindhu River. We have no problem about that. Good morning, sir. If you allow me to uh, answer, yes, ask a question. Okay, sir. okay. Uh, sir, one participant told that in uh, Rig Veda it is mentioned that Bharat is a land between Himalaya and yes which which ocean sir whether it is hind it says samudra samudra it says samudra samudra only samudra sir. only samudra okay thank you sir uh, no, so i think you can even google and find out the exact uh, lyric exact shloka and that will be useful in that uh, uh, sir may i ask one more question yes uh, sir, right now we have discussed about uh, the acceptance of Hind, uh, Hind and Bharat. Yes. If panelists ask about why we are not ready to accept or why we are uh, thinking about accepting India as a, uh, our name, then what should be the answer? Now, India can be you can we will continue to use the name India in international fora. We may like to continue it as a, as an English term for our country. Many countries have. Yes, sir. Uh, two names. Yes, like, sir. for example, we call Germany. Mm. Germany is not a German word. Yes, sir. They call it Deutschland. Deutschland. Okay. France doesn't call it France. Yes, sir. Many countries have their own name as well as their name which is accepted internationally. Yes, sir. If it's I answer... Like Turkey, Turkey, we, we don't call it Turkey. Turkey. They have changed the name to Turkey, but all of us refer to it as Turkey. Yes, sir. Because Sri Lanka became very popular. The word Ceylon practically disappeared from literature. Uh, but uh, we're gradually it will change. Uh, after some time, you know, even in, uh, Wikipedia uses Turkey for Turkey. Yes, sir. Sir, if the follow-up question come along with this, so that, then like question on debate itself. So if we are ready to uh, use this name, then why there is a debate? It's just because of uh, economic or social uh, debate, is, debate is a healthy thing. Okay, Let sir. there be a debate. Let there be a debate. But it, uh, and, uh, it's, if it can rekindle our nationalist spirit, national spirit, yes, why, why not? 
we feel happy that yes we are we are um, going back okay. to the world bharat uh, and we are not throwing out india we are yes. using it as a substitute we are using it for in, maybe like uh, even uh, the word bombay has no bombay has been changed to mumbai yes sir but iit bombay has not changed its name yes sir iit madras has not ch changed its name yes sir so let us continue with uh, the accepted names internationally accepted names for some more time maybe uh, the next generation may like to change it but for the time being the name india will continue to be used okay thank you so much sir sir i have one question sir yes uh, sir uh, what if we are asked is uh, using the name bharat against the secular credentials of india since it is uh, from a religious book or like like how do we tackle such questions who, who told you that rigveda is a uh, religious book it is not mm. it is not a religious book at all there was no hinduism at that time okay the hindu religion didn't exist at that time okay hindu religion that came much later when the uh, actually uh, i am not going to the historical aspect of it i am not a history student but please have a, because uh, rigveda is the indian culture the bharatiya uh, sanskriti bharatiya culture started with rigveda so okay. whether you are hindu or christian or muslim or sikh or pas from um, pasis came from outside but if you have if your roots are in bharat rigveda is part of your legacy part of your heritage Okay. it has nothing to do with religion okay in fact uh, the even the gods mentioned there they are not exactly hindu gods they are natural uh, the uh, gods of the nature hmm. okay thank you so, sir let, let us try to let us try to understand the things in the proper perspective rather than attributing some motive behind some more uh, let us try to understand Uh, no no sir i was it's, just asking you such yeah, kind yeah. of this this type, of, this type of narrative is going on in our country trying yes, to sir. trying to uh, call india uh, you know trying to even say that uh, we are move, you know, trying to uh, move towards a hindutva what is hindutva the, mm. uh, the, from the, uh, our discussion itself it is very clear that hindutva is a geographical construct it's not a it's not a part of our culture the people on this side of hindu sindhu river were called hindus in yes. fact um, uh, uh, let me tell you since you asked this question uh, in babar nama it refers mm -hmm. to hindus there is a term hindu used in babar nama but it is not okay. it is not for meant for uh, describing people of hindu okay. religion it is okay. used for people who are not mughals okay so even the muslims who were in the uh, employee of babar in the army of babar who were not mughals they were also called hindus okay please have a look at you can uh, you can google it and find out uh, there is one person called uh, hasan khan mewati have you heard about hasan khan mewati no sir just google google hasan khan mewati he is from okay. mewati area he was an army general of uh, who defeated rana sanga okay the army army which it, i don't know whether it was part of rana, rana sanga please uh, please uh, google it and find out uh, hasan khan mewati and rana sanga you will uh, know the connection Hasan Khan Mewati has has been described okay. Babar as a uh, in Mughal literature as a Hindustani, as a Hindu. Okay. Isamay. Okay. So Hindu word was used for even Muslims in that time. Okay. So we have we should not think of the word Hindu as uh, uh, a religious term. It means Bharatiya. It means the people of Bharat. there's no other yes. meaning so by going by that definition every uh, citizen of india is a hindu okay that is the definition uh, unfortunately the narrative has been changed to suit uh, 
people's own liking they have their own agenda so some people uh, i would say that even some of the extreme left people extreme right people all are both of them are equally guilty they have uh, tried to portray to as a religion but yeah. we can be asked such questions as a yes, travel, yeah please please try to understand please try to understand what is the meaning of hindu hindu is not oh. a religion the religion name is sanatan dharma there is no religion called hinduism yes hinduism is a culture of bharat to which all of us belong every person mm -hmm. who lives in india is a hindu by that definition once you once we understand this there should not be any quarrel hmm. okay please, uh, please 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 do some research about it you will understand it very well thank okay, you now, now i think we must go to another topic otherwise we will uh, finish the uh, entire two hours by discussing one topics so let us go back and uh, uh, manipur violence many of you wondered so let me go to manipur violence Okay, uh, quickly, uh, some of the um, statistics you must be familiar with, that is, uh, of course, I, I'm not sure whether these statistics are correct, because different sources give different percentages of Maiti population in Manipur. Some people say it is less than 50%, some say it is 53%. I'm going by the census figures, which give 53%, but right now it may be less than 50%, I don't know. Most of the Metis population live in Imphal Valley, which constitutes only 10% of the land. 90% of the land is in hills and occupied mostly by tribals. There are more than 30 tribes in um, Manipur. Mo uh, the main uh, tribes are Nagas and Kukis. They constitute uh, around 40% of the tribal, 40% of the total population of the state. And most of them live in hills. They are very uncomfortable living in the plains because they don't see eye to eye with the Maitis. And Maitis are also, also not very comfortable living with Nagas and Kukis. This is very unfortunate. And that is the reason why uh, Kukis have been demanding a separate statehood. Uh, now coming to the reservation issue, uh, the tribals, naturally, they have the scheduled tribe status. Metis, most of them are OBCs, but some scheduled castes are also there among Metis. And in 1949, when Manipur became a part of the Republic of India, I know Republic of India came later, but it became part of India, they had tri tribal status before signing the merger agreement. But after that, they somehow lost the tribal status. And there is a scheduled tribe demand committee of Manipur, STDCM. They have been demanding scheduled tribe status for Metis. And in 2012, they approached the High Court of Manipur and they, they wonder, and they also approach the government of India. And government of India, uh, uh, High Court had uh, uh, also asked the comments of the government of India. Government of India on 29 May 2013 sought the recommendation of the state as on the reservation plea. This was in 2013. Nothing happened after 2013 for 10 years. The government of Manipur did not respond to Ministry of Tribal Affairs letter. And in 2023, one judge of the Manipur High Court, Mr. Murli Taran, he gave a direction to the state to submit within four weeks a, recommend, a reply to that letter. At what what is the view of the Manipur state to the letter sent by the 
ट्राइबल अफेयर्स मिनिस्ट्री इन टू थाउजेंड थर्टीन एंड दैट ऑल दि हेल्प ब्रोक औट आफ्टर दैट इन मार्च ईवन बिफोर दैट लेटर केम दैट डायरेक्शन केम फ्रम दि हई कोर्ट वयलेंस हाड स्टार्ट इन मणिपूर् बट इट बिकेम मच मोर वाइड स्प्रेड एंड डेजरस् आफ्टर दैट डायरेक्शन फ्रम दि हई कोर्ट जज and there is another there are certain other issues i am not going to comment on the issues just giving giving the facts uh, you can draw your own conclusions it, see there there are two major issues in manipur which need the attention of the state government which had been attracting the attention of the state government one is the influx of the refugees uh, from myanmar and also from bangladesh but most of them originated from myanmar they came directly from myanmar because My myanmar has a border with manipur they also came via bangladesh and many of these refugees they have relations with the hookies of uh, manipur and collectively they are called the so people that that is a major problem which the manipur government had to address the other issue which manipur government had to address was the issue of uh, opium cultivation poppy cultivation there is in the hill tracks there are lot of cultivation of uh, ganja and poppy i think it is mostly ganja i not i don't remember what exactly there so the uh, this has also done mostly by the tribals the naga san cookies so uh, this manipur government had started a campaign against that so the, both these together culminated in an unrest because the cookies started giving the narrative that the manipur government is targeting them but manipur government was actually uh, dealing with the drug menace and bangladesh had also played its own cards bangladesh had started throwing out the tribals from the chitagong hill tracks and bangladesh army had launched an operation uh, to throw them out from there uh, and kuki uh, chin national army uh, there was a fight between bangladesh army and the kuki chin national army on this issue and naturally when the kuki chin national army found it difficult to fight against the bangladesh army many of them started migrating towards manipur and also mizoram mizoram also has this has a similar problem uh, maybe in the near future there could be an unrest in mizoram also and it started after april the issue started taking uh, occurring more steam and in jul and in may uh, there was a video of two kuki women being paraded naked but that video surfaced only in july and by that time all the hell broke out and you are all familiar with what happened after that and as per the latest report 175 people have been killed but the violence has still not subsided it is still going on and manipur government is finding it extremely difficult to deal with it because it is a, an extremely sensitive issue anyone who has dealt with the law and order issues would know that you had to tread on very very um, it's a very very tricky situation you if you don't tread very cautiously it can blow up so if the the manipur government takes any drastic action very uh, drastic steps are taken then that will create a problem because that will be considered as uh, putting the cookies and uh, nagas cookies uh, cookies and nagas on one side and uh, 
the Metis on the other side. The Metis, of course, have the advantage of uh, having more representation in the assembly, uh, but the population in the tribal areas, in the hill track, it is with the cookies. So it is uh, very difficult, very difficult. And Metis are also living in the hills. Some Meti villages are also there in the hills. So they are finding it extremely difficult. And uh, sometimes the cookies target the Meti population in the hills. And you must have read in the newspapers about uh, some villages being, um, you know, shifting from the hills towards the valley, all these things are happening. So the government has to be very, very cautious in its approach. Any precipitate action can be very, very disastrous. This That is the reason why the violence is going on for the last more than six months. And I had tried to talk to some of my Manipur colleagues, of course, they are, they have retired long back and they are not familiar with the present situation, but they said any violence taking place in Manipur, it will go on for months together. And the previous history also says the same thing, that uh, the violence can continue for two or three years at a stretch. So Manipur government is trying to contain it, but the violence will keep on surfacing again and again for some more time. So we have to be aware of that. And now if you have any questions on this, we can please you can ask the questions and answer them also. Hello, sir. Yes. Good morning. Yes, sir, uh, for this issue, sir, a lot of times the role of media is highlighted, that the media has not played a very favorable role in highlighting I, the issues. That's right. Actually, media is not, media is mostly giving one-sided pictures. Media is not giving the full picture. Some some media are doing it. I have I gone through the media. I have when I was preparing this uh, uh, topic for the current affairs radio reckoner. I have gone through different uh, media, and some of them are balanced. Uh, so I would suggest that when you read this type of news, please don't read only from one channel or from one uh, newspaper go to uh, newspapers with a different political stance because uh, the complete picture nobody seems to be giving so yes. uh, so in manipur and uh, the violence has been there and also in neighboring northeastern states there has been violence so yes. does this always justify the afspa which was banged by the center you know, ASPA was uh, involved only to uh, reduce the damage. If uh, if we do not have the army operating there, things could have gone out of hand. And don't forget that uh, these are uh, border areas. In a border area, we should be aware, of course, I didn't mention it uh, when I was giving the presentation, that we should not forget that the foreign powers operating near the border, they also can play havoc. And they are playing havoc with our northeastern states. And if we, if the army's presence is not there, things can go out of hand. And it, it is even possible that uh, the country may break. Country may break into more than two or three, like what happened with the Pakistan and Bangladesh. Something similar can happen even in respect of the northeastern part of India. So, uh, our, uh, should we accept that as a fait accompli or should we try to prevent it? That is a big question. I am not saying that the army should continue there forever. Army uh, presence can create some alienation among the tribals. That is accepted. But then unless the tribals can be brought to the mainstream, they can accept the sovereignty of India, 100% acceptance, 
things will uh, be like this for some some more time you go uh, i don't know whether anyone uh, no one of you have visited northeast you will get an opportunity when you come to civil service you will definitely get a chance to go to the northeast whenever you get a chance to go there please you must go there and there you can even see uh, foreign flags fluttering in the homes in front of our in the indian homes you will see foreign flags what does it mean that their loyalty is not 100% towards india this is a, this is a fact of life we have to live up to it but we don't want northeast to break we want northeast to con continue with it and the uh, the present uh, the government's attitude and the uh, policy towards northeast uh that is there in my uh, ready reckoner i have mentioned about the uh, policy of northeast the uh, howard government of india is doing on northeast please go through that that will give you some idea about what our government is doing uh, we have a separate uh, separate department of northeastern region donor and that yes, has been, that has been doing an outstanding work please go through the uh, website of a donor that will also give you a lot of good ideas but the presence of the army at least for some more time has to be there without that uh, the northeast can break okay sir. thank you sir so i have a doubt sir yes so in the current manipur violence issue miscreants on each side even though if the larger yes. public wants peace miscreants yes. on each side they tend to post some videos and create further ruckus yes. Yes, you are right. You are right. Uh, yes, in uh, such a scenario, how will we reach a political solution? I mean, viewing it as a law and order, then the violence will keep continuing. So, how will we reach a political solution in such a scenario? A political situation, political solution can come only through negotiations, only through dialogue. And see what happened in Nagaland. Uh, I think, uh, did you have that talk by Tamil Nadu governor? Sorry, sir. Not yet, sir. Uh, it is not yet. Okay, so please ask these questions to him. He is he is the right person to answer this question because he has he was uh, dealing with the uh, he was in uh, negotiating with the Nagas before he became governor. Mr. R. N. Ravi. Yes, sir. Mr. Yes, R. N. Ravi has been negotiating, and now see Nagaland has become much more peaceful now. So please, please ask, please reserve this question. Please reserve this question to Mr. R. N. Ravi. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He, will be, he will be talking about it. And but he has much more knowledge about that area. I don't have much knowledge. I have been to Northeast, but I don't have much knowledge about Northeastern politics. Mr. Ravi will be the right person to give you an answer to this question. Somebody is talking there. Please, please stop talking. Please don't don't do any cross talking. Please switch, please switch off your microphone. Okay, only only one person at a time to switch on the microphone. The rest of them, rest of you should keep it in the muted form. Okay. Morning, now, the, yes, please reserve this, reserve these questions to Mr. R. N. Ravi. Yes, sir. Thanks for the information, sir. I will ask. Him, okay. Because uh, he he will give he will answer give the answer because I have attended many of his lectures. Uh, he will definitely give you a very good answer. Okay, now, now let us go to the next topic. Uh, we can keep on talking about this, but uh, let us not. Uh, uh, let us try to cover a, a few more topics. I will talk about the caste based census now. Okay, caste based census is a very, very sensitive issue. And don't and sometimes the uh, interview board might try to trap you put a trap and uh, don't fall in the trap whether whatever caste you belong to that is immaterial you are uh, trying to become civil servants civil servant doesn't have a caste civil servant has only one religion one caste that is india there's no other caste or religion for civil servant so uh, always try to put yourself in that frame of mind and try to address this issue. Otherwise, uh, it can be very risky. Bihar government started the caste survey. They didn't call it a census. They didn't call it. They called it a survey. But then 
somebody challenged it and the Patna High Court stayed the survey saying that it is as good as a census and census can be conducted only by the government of India uh, because uh, uh, the authority is under entry 69 of list 1 of 7 schedule is with sender. So a state cannot conduct a census. But this was agitated before the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court did allow uh, Bihar government to go ahead with the survey. Uh, but just as a survey, but uh, put some restrictions on publishing the data. But still, some of the material data is available. Government of India has never been very happy with the census. Whichever government was in power, whether it is BJP government or Congress government, no uh, union government has been in support of caste-based census. Caste-based census had been conducted in 2011. Uh, the survey had been conducted. There was also the uh, socio-economic caste census, which was then in 2011. Caste-based caste, -based, caste uh, data was collected in 2011, but it was never published. It is available for research purposes, for very limited purposes it is available, but uh, it is the data is not published because it is a very, very sensitive data it, and it can create uh, much more division in the society uh, which the government is definitely not, in, not happy with. And government of India said that uh, a cash census is administratively difficult and cumbersome and it can also create havoc in the with the cultural uh, with the social system of the country and also requested that the judiciary should not direct the government to conduct a caste census because it is a policy decision not to do so and judiciary should not interfere with policy matters and in october 2023 the Supreme Court declined to in, uh, intervene in the state government's decision to release the data of the uh, cash survey, but a final decision is yet to be taken. By the time your interview comes, probably the next hearing of the Supreme Court case would have come. So please be on the lookout for the next hearing date. And whatever Supreme Court decides on that day or whatever they comments on that day, that will be very, very useful to you in your preparing your answers. So, but I uh, doubt very much that the data, the detailed data would be released because it can create fissures in the uh, country which nobody will like. And the broad survey figures which were released by Bihar government, that uh, the economic extremely backward classes comprised 36%, backward classes 27.1. Together, it comes to 53% of the state population is backward classes. Whereas the reservation is only for 27%. And naturally, all of us know that the backward classes are weak in education and income, access to technology, etc. So they definitely need some kind of state intervention. Some uh, schemes have to be there to help them, but then whether reservation is the way to help them, that's a big question which uh, nobody is able to answer properly. Because uh, so far the uh, experience is that reservation has not really helped any community beyond a certain limit. Because, because there is always a tendency for some part of that population, part of that community to corner the benefits of reservation and the benefits of reservation may not trickle down to the entire population. So these problems are there. How do we address it? 
that is to be seen. Maybe we can say that uh, once uh, somebody gets their uh, benefit of reservation, their progeny should not get it. And this type of ideas are always there. Bihar Assembly also passed a bill on 9th November 2023 to increase the reservation of backward classes, EBCs, scheduled cars, and scheduled drives. Uh, and right now, the 50% ceiling is there. All of you are familiar with that 50% ceiling, but Bihar government has increased it to 65%. And this is in addition to the 10% reservation for EWS quota, which has been accepted by the state and Supreme Court. In another, there's another judgment you are all familiar with, it, an old judgment, um, uh, almost two years old judgment uh, about EWS quota. Uh, though the final word is yet to be uh, written about that, but 10% reservation is has been accepted for EWS quota. But in addition to that, 65% reservation for the other reserved categories. So that will make it the total reservation 75%. Whether that will stand the test of the Supreme Court or not, that is yet to be seen. Somebody will definitely challenge it. Some, somebody might have already challenged it. And we have to wait for the Supreme Court's decision on whether 75% is acceptable or not. But the fact is that Poverty is much more widespread among the reserved categories, whether they are OBCs, scheduled tribes, or scheduled castes. There is much more prevalence of poverty among these categories, and naturally, the the state has to address this issue. But how do we address it? Whether it has to be done through reservation or through some other schemes, that is an issue which you can think about. Education, uh, some data I have given here, but this, uh, now in, anything more you would like to discuss on this issue? Otherwise, we can go to one, one or two more topics. Any more clarification on this? Uh, good afternoon, sir. Yes, good afternoon. Uh, sir, based on the, what Bihar has done, Yes. All the states start, start doing yes. it. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, this, this, this is how you should ask questions. This is how you should ask questions. In fact, I wanted to, I was going to answer, ask this question, but I'm happy that you asked this. Please, please start asking this type of questions. If every state starts giving reservation at par with the population of the uh, communities there, what is the end of it? Are we not breaking the country into different segments on communal basis. Is it desirable or not? Please think about it. I am not going to give anybody would like to give an answer to this question. Or Nitesh, you can yourself give the answer. Ask that you are, uh, this question is asked to you by NPC. How will you answer it? Sir, first of all, uh, yes. such practices are uh, not uh, in sync with the uh, what Whatever the constitution of India uh, delineates. No, no, forget about constitution. Forget about constitution. Constitution can change. Constitution can change. A fifty percent reservation can also change. Yes, sir. Is it desirable or not? Sir. Okay. Yes. It can hamper the administrative efficiency. Reservation beyond a point, as Supreme Court has mentioned. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. How will you answer that? Give the answer. Give the answer. Sir, it can but also lead to proliferation of many more cars in the coming time. Mm -hmm. Proliferation of please, many more please, cars. Please, please give it as an answer. Okay. Assume that you are you are asked, asked this question in UPSC. Mm -hmm. How will you answer? You give okay. the answer. Okay, sir. Sir, sir. reservation is a mean. One, 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 at a, one at a time. Who is speaking? I can't okay. uh, see you. Sir, may I speak, sir? Oh, Hello? Okay, okay. Um, um, Ratati. Yes, sir. Yes, please. Sir, yes, please. Go ahead. Sir, uh, sir, in my uh, in my limited knowledge, I think that though the caste-based census is desirable as it can provide reservation benefits to the needy people, but at the same time, I think that it will lead to proliferation of castes uh, if uh, in the coming time, which can again create difficult situation uh, before the government. 
so uh, so sir uh, 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 if uh, yeah, so sir i think that uh, though, uh, though though it's the desirable uh, but uh, um, but uh, ma uh, any other thing like uh, uh, means any other uh, thing to provide the benefits uh, means uh, providing benefits in some other terms can much more be beneficial than providing the reservation benefits in long term Okay. Uh, means, means, sir, my point is the proliferation of caste. This yes. is the major issue. Yes. Means this can okay. happen. Okay. okay, I will, I will suggest, I will suggest to all of you uh, when you look at the ready reckoner, there is one you know, topic: subclassification of OBCs. Please, please go, please go through that. See, there is a problem in sub. You see, we have thousands of caste in our. OBC is not one community. There are several communities, hundreds, maybe even thousands. So how do we classify? Uh, suppose if suppose if we provide uh, a benefit to a certain category, then within that category itself there will be uh, several categories. Within that one category itself there will be subcategories. Then somebody will say that uh, in my category, my community, some people are uh, much better off. I am poor, so I should get benefit. So I should be treated as a separate category. Where is the end to it? So uh, the uh, the commu the committee, uh, Rohini Justice Rohini committee, which was appointed to study the sub uh, issue of subclassification of OBCs. The committee has submitted its report, but how much time it has taken? It's a very, very delicate issue. The committee itself found it difficult to address this issue because <clears throat> once we start classifying OBCs into different categories, there is no end to it. And it will open a Pandora's box. Government is aware of it and government is very, very scared of opening this Pandora's box. And as future civil servants, you should also be uh, familiar with what type of situations can arise out of the subclassification of OBCs and uh, what more harm it can do. Really, you are all, all of you are familiar with what happened after the Mandal agitation. The, the country was yes. divided to a number of communities. Um, within the same community, uh, there were uh, there was division. We have the creamy layer and a non-creamy layer. And how long we will continue to divide the communities? And is it desirable at all? Should we address it in some other manner? Should we restrict reservation to economic consideration only? Or should we continue with the uh, community consider con uh, caste consideration? How long we should continue? Because uh, uh, on social considerations are important. I'm not saying that social consideration should not be. Socially oppressed communities, they should be allowed to come up. They should be allowed to express themselves properly. They should get the opportunities. But how long we should do that? The constitution provided a certain period, 15 years time. But you know, we have uh, gone uh, 75 years now. How long we, we should continue to divide the same community into creamy layer and non-creamy layer? Should we um, put a stop to that and say that only non-creamy layer will get reservation, creamy layer will not get reservation whether they belong to a particular community or not? All these are issues which civil servants will have to address if not today, tomorrow, you will definitely have to address it. But because it cannot go on forever. And it can, sometimes it can also create constitutional problems that uh, some people may say that uh, I decided, actually happened in uh, my state of Haryana, that uh, when there was a talk about, when there was a demand for uh, classifying jats as OBC. There was a demand for classifying jats as OBC. It was op opposed by jats themselves, saying that it is uh, it's a uh, 
you know, it's, uh, it's affecting our dignity. It's a matter of dignity for us that we should not be called OBCs. But now the same uh, JAT population is demanding OBC status because they know that by getting OBC status, they will get reservation. They will, uh, reservation can benefit them. But uh, so this type of problems can also come. Uh, and in the, the same community, once you cross, once you go to another state, you become OBC. In one state, you may be up forward class and uh, another uh, you get married to a person from the same community in another state, you become an OBC. So this type of anomalies are happening in our country. And naturally, any state will be concerned about it. Any civil servant will be concerned about it. And as civil servants, we have to look at it objectively. We should not be allowed, we should not allow ourselves to be carried away by narrow considerations. And th that is why I uh, I am trying to provoke you, provoke your thinking that please think about all these issues and come up with a balanced answer. I cannot give you the answer to these questions because I am not facing the interview. When you face the interview, the answer has to come from your brain, from your mind. Think about it and try to give a, an answer which will be acceptable but at the same sir, time may I for this yes yes please uh, sir in yeah in my opinion uh, the debate around a uh, reservation uh, the going up uh, reservation has to deal with in uh, a certain aspect a eh? the conducted caste based survey is a uh, is in need of an hour to understand the socio-economic profile of right now, but it yes. should not utilized for purpose of just only reservation, but it should be utilized from other qualitative change which we yes. need to yes. do in a different policy aspect. Uh, you're with right. regards you're right. Yes, you're right. You're yeah. right. It should be used, but but it can get into the wrong hands also. Yes, sir. And uh, right, right now, the that way it is in 2008, even the socio-economic uh, survey. Yes, sir. Coming 2011, to that. Why is it that the government has not uh, not it? released? Because government is using it. Government is using that yes. data. It has been used for yes. Aishman Bhar. Yes, sir. It has been used for many other schemes. That that we must yes, accept sir. because they they need intervention. These communities yes, need intervention by the state, but not intervention by the media. Not by the politicians. That is the issue. That is where you draw a line. If yes, yes, sir. Is Should I complete my answer? It can create havoc. Should I complete my answer? Yes, please. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, it should be used for other pers uh, purpose, specifically for qualitative changes uh, to uplift this uh, community. Uh, the current... Uh, the current... Uh, uh, policy which is uh, around uh, capacity building and development that has to be more impetus uh, along with the community where we the demand of reservation is coming again and again to address those grimaces which are there for river, uh, reservation but by not giving reservation but by by using another strategy so that demand would be uh, gradually subsided and we can have a balance uh, a balance around the society Okay. You can also add to your uh, answer that uh, this data should be used, can be used for research purposes. Because yes, uh, uh, socio sociological research is much more research is required in our country because we have to un understand the problems of the uh, backward classes and the scheduled cost and scheduled drive. We need to understand much more. And uh, definitely yes, researchers can help the government by coming up with solutions. Sir, I have a question. Uh, question with the previous sleeve, we have talked about that uh, there should be uh, a line between this, uh, that state is using and not the media and the politicians are using it. Sir, yes. there's yes. another value in the administration that uh, transparency and accountability of the government. So when the uh, data used by the government is not public or not open, how do we ensure that the government is not misusing that data? 
because we it to, is... we had to trust the government we had to we have elected the government we had to trust the government whichever party comes to power they they maintain the secrecy they are okay. they okay. give an oath of secrecy also so hmm. who or becomes a defense minister he will he or she will uh, preserve the defense secrets okay. it is immaterial which party they belong to okay sir because they are they are they are our elected representatives we have to trust them okay as civil sir, servants sir. also as civil servants also we must trust our ministers we must trust our politicians because after all they also have a stake they have been elected by okay. the people. okay okay sir hello yes. sir okay. sir okay. then the question arises that whether the center should take a lead in conducting the caste census or whether it should give it to the states that they can do their respective census the center is already doing it center is already doing it center is collect, collecting data center has data it is not published it is they have the data okay sir yes shall we move to another topic sir uh, can i mention yes. mention the uh, sons of soil policy of maharashtra and the violence that it led to in maharashtra also it can promotes vote bank politics if we go on reservation like that and it promotes regionalism and hence statehood demand yes yes the maratha reservation issue is very important particularly those of you who hail from maharashtra please uh, formulate your own views about maratha reservation i have given the material in the red reckoner on maratha reservation but i have not given any judgment on it so you can you can pass your own judgment you can have your own views because marathas as far as i know uh, most of the marathas are not backward there may be backward marathas also but most of them are not and they are politically powerful also so okay, how sir. how do we reserve but these are these issues which uh, uh, try to maintain the balance try uh, try to understand it and uh, give your answers based on that understanding rather than your sentiments rather than your personal bias you may have personal bias some of you who belong to a particular category you may have your own bias but overcome that try to overcome that bias and try to think like a civil servant okay now let us uh, let us quickly go through same sex marriage also because otherwise we will not be able to do justice to today's class uh, same sex marriage this question can definitely come in your civil service interview because the decision came only in on 17th october 2023 very 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 recent current affair so there will be questions on uh, same sex marriage here again i will caution you don't get swayed by your personal views you may have your own personal views about lgbt community you may have views about same sex marriage you may have views about uh, uh, the definition of rape all these things you may have but please don't allow your personal views or personal bias to interfere with your civil service answer because there you are sitting as a civil ser future civil servant a future civil servant will go by what is best for the society not what is best for your community okay so please keep that in mind while answering questions on uh, this type of delicate issues the when the petition came before the supreme court their uh, contention was that uh, it is a discrimination that uh, some people just because of their sexual orientation they are denied the right to marry so they cited the constitutional provisions also and opposing that the center said it would create havoc in the society and the deli uh, with the delicate balance of personal laws and accepted social values now here the one issue which uh, came up in the in, during the discussion in the supreme court that uh, suppose suppose this is a question which you can think about i am not going to answer this question you can think about it suppose it is legalized same sex marriage is legalized let us assume for argument sake but suppose the society does not accept it society ostracizes 
same sex couples what will happen to them what will happen to their children what will happen to their social status these are the issues which is central government was concerned about central government was not against same sex uh, no, people of the same sex living together they didn't accept, uh, they didn't oppose that is that you can uh, the uh, article 37 uh, section 377 ipc has been decriminalized uh, the, central government has also not opposed it the supreme court had done it and central government has accepted it that means that people from of the same sex can live together but whether we can call it a marriage or not that is the issue here because it is not only sexual orientation which matters there it is a social system a social institution marriage is a social institution but how we become mature enough to accept same sex marriage as a social institution in, in india maybe at some point of time we may accept it but how we reach that situation how we reach the stage where we the our society will accept it there are many things which are not accepted by the society society keeps changing there are certain uh, relations which were accepted by the society long back like uh, marriage between first cousins which was very very prevalent even even now it is prevalent in some part of the country now society has not society is not happy with it now there was a time when society accepted it so it was a practice it was a social practice but now it is not so society keeps changing and maybe a time will come when same sex marriage also may find acceptance with the society but how we reach that stage that is a question you have to ask yourself now sender had said that we have not reached that stage it will create uh, havoc with the delicate balance of personal laws and accepted social values what is accepted social value can change what is accepted today may not be accepted tomorrow or vice versa so some, uh, some government of india is more concerned about the impact it will have on society rather than on an individual as an individual yes you have you are protected you have certain rights given to you by the constitution of india but you have to draw a line between your personal right and the right of the society wherever your individual right clashes with the right of the society that may be the end of your individual freedom and that is something which has been accepted by all societies throughout the world that has been accepted that your individual freedom stops where the society's rights start or the where the whether the other person's right starts your right will come to a stop so that line has to be drawn that is the argument given by the government of india and is that any further creation of rights recognition of relationship and giving legal sanctity to such relationships can be done only by the competent legislature and not by judicial adjudic so they said uh, they asked this supreme court okay you have given your views but don't interfere in the legislative jurisdiction and my feeling is that supreme court will accept it supreme court may refuse to interfere in adjudication on same sex marriage you can see that in january when the hearing starts most likely supreme court will say that this is something which the judiciary sh you know, should not touch it should be uh, discussed in the parliament and parliament should take a view on it despite decriminalization of section 377 ipc the petitioners claim a fundamental right for same sex marriage because they can live together they can have sex also but they cannot marry that is what supreme court said and now some interesting points uh, when you uh, i am giving this uh, 
points only to supplement your answer to make your answer more complete whatever is your view please keep these things also in mind section 5 of hindu marriage act it says very clearly it marriage between two hindus it does not say marriage between a hindu man and hindu woman it does not say that in fact the supreme court chief justice referred to it in some, made a passing reference to this that it doesn't say marriage between a man and a woman so two hindus can two hindus be of the same sex that question was left unanswered now uh, look at the other aspects of the uh, law say that the parties uh, it said the, the exception is that the parties are not within the degrees of prohibited relationship unless the custom or usage governing each of them permits of a marriage between the two now here this is very interesting because has the society accepted it the law says the marriage hindu marriage act says that if it is not accepted by the society it will not be allowed now has the society accepted same sex marriage so far no so this exception will or this proviso will be attracted when we say any two hindus he said that uh, they should not be in the degree of a prohibited relationship so as far as society is concerned the marriage between two men or by, between two women is a prohibited relationship so it uh, is covered under that so even if it says any two hindus this particular proviso this particular clarification has to be kept in mind the expression custom and usage signify any rule which having been continuously and uniformly observed for a long time has obtained the force of law among hindus in any local area tribe community group or family provided that the rule is certain and not unreasonable or opposed to public policy so if it uh, touches on the constitutional morality probably supreme court might intervene but if it only touches social morality supreme court may not intervene at all so please try to draw this line between social morality and constitutional morality try to build it in your answer because what is social uh, what what is challenging social morality may not be acceptable to the society and then it may not be covered by the exception under the hindu marriage act same thing is there in the case of special marriage act also uh, i am just leaving these thoughts to you i, I am not giving the final answer but just leaving a uh, thought it uh, section 4 of special marriage act says notwithstanding anything contained in any other law for the time being in force relating to the solemnization of marriages a marriage between any two persons it it does not say, say any two persons of different sex between any two persons may be solemnized under this act if at the time of the marriage or the uh, marriage the following conditions are fulfilled now when we come to the conclusion again the same problem will come whether it is acceptable to the society or not otherwise law says marriage between two persons can be solemnized so the uh, same sex persons can say that yes we are two persons so we can be married but then the conditions the male has completed the age of 21 and female the age of 18 so it uh, indirectly it means that marriage is between a male and a female though the law does not clearly say that but when the condition has been imposed we have to assume that marriage has been accepted only between a male aged 21 or above and a female aged 18 and above and also the parties are not within the degrees of prohibited relationship provided that where a custom governing at least one of the parties permits of a marriage between them such marriage may be solemnized notwithstanding that they are within the de degrees of prohibited relationship now uh, let, let take the case of uh, north indian communities the marriage between same gotra 
is prohibited. The society has prohibited it. Law has not prohibited it. Society has prohibited it. So that it will come under the definition of prohibited relationship. The state can intervene in such cases. So here again, the question of social morality and constitutional morality will come. Please have a closer look at uh, these two topics, social morality and uh, constitutional morality, and then your answer will be very good. So, Excuse me, sir. Yes, ma'am. Sir, uh, when we were talking about... Shall, the we shall, we shall we complete it? Then we'll come to the question. Yeah, sure. So thank okay. you, sir. Let, let us... Uh, this very important... Uh, uh, this These two slides are very important. Then we'll uh, we'll take another five minutes and then we'll come to question. Uh, section 377, uh, uh, which deals with unnatural sex, uh, and it is supposed to be against the order of nature. That is what Section 377 says. In 2009... The NAS Foundation, it's a very famous case, NAS Foundation case. If you just Google NAS Foundation case, you will get the full details. NAS, they challenged the constitutionality of Section 377 as it while they said it violates Article 14, 15, 19, and 21. Court ruled, so that is a Delhi High Court, ruled there was a difference of opinion between the judges, but the majority judgment, they said, court ruled that punishing sexual activity between two consenting adults under Section 377 violates the right to equality, privacy, and personal liberty of such persons. Now, this was challenged by some persons. Supreme Court, it went to Supreme Court. Supreme Court reversed the NAS verdict in Suresh Kumar Kaushal and another words of NAS Foundation, it held that only the parliament can decriminalize homosexuality. They refused to intervene in the uh, issue of same-sex marriage. They said only parliament can do it. Five individuals from the LGBTQ community, uh, the names are there, so you can uh, Google and find out. Uh, they filed a new writ petition challenging the constitutionality of Section 377. This is in continuation of the NAS Foundation case. With NAS Foundation case, Supreme Court has said we will not interfere. But then they said, no, uh, 377 has to be challenged. It, uh, then uh, the case went to the Supreme Court again. Supreme Court held that a classification between natural and un unnatural intercourse is Uh, it is not legally valid and natural laws should not determine the legality or acceptance of a phenomenon. Penal consequences for act an act that is unnatural or wrong cannot be imposed without sufficient justification. Practically, uh, they were also not in a position, not in a mood to give a final finding on it. There, they had discussed the issue of constitutional morality also. Court described constitutional morality as the ideals and uh, uh, morals of the constitution and the values that create an inclusive society. It recognized the constitution as a tool to transform society. A decision on whether a penal provision violates fundamental rights must be guided by the principles of constitutional morality and not social morality. Where, where a constitutional court finds that a provision violates constitutional morality, it must be struck down. So, uh, in, a, in, in a nutshell, Supreme Court said that if issue of constitutional morality is in, involved, we will interfere. Otherwise, if it is only social morality, the matter will go to the parliament. We will not interfere. Okay. And also, the, they mentioned that we are uh, bound by the Yogacarta principles. And uh, there is a decision of the Na uh, Supreme Court in the NALSA versus Union of India. I, I brought... Okay, these are the Yogacarta principles. You can Google it and find out. Uh, it's there in the Red Reckoner also. NALSA, uh, this NALSA versus Union of India, this is the uh, judgment which practically held that uh, uh, you know, it gave the direction of gave the uh, that new term called the third gender it, in, it introduced the legal term called the third gender this was the uh, judgment on that okay now 
now we can go to uh, i i'll stop here i will not go into any other, any topic uh, all the other topics are discussed here but we don't have the time let us go to questions on same sex marriage now who will like to talk will start the discussion hello sir yes um yes, sir. sir i had a doubt like when we were talking about yes. the same sex marriage we came to hindu marriage act and yes, sir yes. when we were talking about the india versus bharat debate we came to the opinion that uh, hindu is more of a geographical uh, indicator yes, yes, but yes, the yes. government itself in the hindu marriage act i think we mean the hindu religion not the geographical connotation uh, so yes, isn't there, that there, this you are right you are right there it there it means hindu religion yes sir so isn't this contradictory yes, what it, i it, will it, say it, to the board and it, what government is saying it, you know it is it is contradictory but uh, see uh, when we write when uh, in a, an application form uh, we are asked to write our religion most of us write hindu Yes, sir. So that has become accepted, though that is not the, uh, the legal meaning. May be right legally. Yes, Hindu means a religion, but uh, in in sociological terms, it is not a religion. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you, sir. It's purely a legal term, purely a legal term, because there is in legal term there is nothing called Sanatan Dharma. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Hello, sir. Yes. Sir, uh, in this issue, same-sex marriage, can we uh, like can we quote the minority judgment that has given by D. Y. Chandrachur? Means, means like uh, he has. You, told you can refer. You can refer it to it. Refer to it uh, hmm. to uh, as as one of the views. But that hmm. that view has not been found uh, acceptance. It does not found acceptance in the majority. So mm -hmm. it's not their decision. It is only now. It's an only an opinion. That way, it's it not an editorial also. Yes, sir, means can I means if 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 panel member will ask my opinion, then can I frame my opinion drawing the conclusion of minority judgment? Uh, if if you present it as your opinion, it's okay. If, if you say that just because Justice Chandra Jyot said that I am going, going that should not be good. Achha. If you have a view on it, you can mm. do, you can view it, and then of course there are, you will be inviting questions, further questions. But I, mm. I am not saying that you should not give your views. Any mm. view is okay as long as it is not extreme. Mm. There is no problem. Mm -hmm. uh, the PSC will not mind uh, an independent judgment on your side. Certainly, but provided you are able to justify it, provided you are able to give good uh, arguments in support of mm -hmm. your view, mm -hmm. so they will they will grill you on that. If you say yeah. something which is not exactly acceptable to the government, mm -hmm. they will mm -hmm. they will start asking questions on that. Right. And then then you should stand on firm ground. Be mm -hmm. very sure that you are standing on firm ground and you are mm -hmm. not on a very dicey uh, situation um, as long as you are confident about your answer you go ahead okay okay sir thank you sir so uh, i have a view i'll i'll, uh, I'll, I I'll also i'll tell you brother you i'll also tell you one more thing yes if, sir if i am i am sitting in the panel i will like mm -hmm. it i will like your independent viewpoint mm -hmm. your independent judgment of a situation your independent viewpoint i will like it Mm -hmm. But don't think that everybody will like it. Mm -hmm. Okay, you are sitting in front of five persons. Only yes, five sir. persons may not have the same kind of uh, liberal outlook. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that is why I keep on saying that don't go to the extremes. Okay, it's not, it is not that the extreme is wrong. Mm -hmm. It's not extremes are not. I'm not uh, certainly. I will not say that extremes are wrong. Mm -hmm. But extremes can create problems for you. Mm -hmm. your, your objective now is to get into civil service. Yes, sir. If it it will prevent you from getting into yes, civil sir. service, then why why go for it? So yes, try sir. to that is why you have to try maintain maintain your balance. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, uh, okay. Who was uh, who was talking before that? Good afternoon, sir. Sir, I had a question regarding the money for violence. Okay. Sir, we witnessed that certain armories were robbed, and this has yes. been yes. a historical tradition 
uh, in the Chittagong Armory raid also. Sir, yeah. does these armories have very less security? Is something uh, because uh, uh, sometimes it is an insider work also. Then. Okay. Sir. Many many cases in the police also there are methis and cookies. Sometimes in, what happened in Manipur is that it, uh, uh, this has happened with uh, connivance of the insiders. That is why the state government is in a difficult situation. See, uh, it is very easy to criticize the state government for failure in maintaining law and order. You can say that the state government has failed to maintain law and order. But then look at the uh, issue they are handling. They are... Uh, uh, no. Sometimes it is happening. You know, then somebody is somebody is creating problems. Somebody is creating unnecessary noise. Please keep your microphone muted. After your talk, please keep it muted. Only when you have to talk, you unmute it. See, even in, it happened in uh, Haryana also when the jat agitation was going on. The police found it very difficult to deal with situation because. Jats had a substantial presence in the police force. It, this type of issues do come in civil service. We had to be aware of this situation, that it is not very easy to deal with it as a on a one-to-one -one basis. You had to deal, you had to deal with it as uh, you know, because you are dealing with a uh, uh, full society. Society consists of different category of people. And what is applicable, what is liked by one category may not be liked by another category. And you have to carry all of them together. These problems do come. Thank you, sir. You know, sir, I have a question. Okay. Uh, sir, this Manipur violence, uh, yeah. what the state government did and what the central government did is a very different thing. But I'm asking you, like, if I'm posted in future in an area which is such yeah. sensitive area then yes. what should be my approach as a civil servant practical approach yes. that could be taken to contain the violence and save as many citizens as i can okay. with whatever Practic amount of power that i have okay. i i know since uh, we have all dealt with this situation i can tell you yes. Yes. most practical approach is that you become acceptable to the people you try to make yourself acceptable to the people how do you do that by remaining neutral, by remaining above petty considerations. And everybody in the community should think that, yes, this is an officer who will stand by justice, who will, uh, who may be harsh, he may, he may take very uh, drastic steps, but he will definitely uphold justice. But if you have that kind of an acceptability in the society, half your work is done. We had to uh, in the uh, that is why I keep telling uh, because I've seen, when I was in the training institute also I used to tell my trainees that the most important thing for a civil servant that in the first few years of your service make yourself acceptable. Let people think that yes, this is an officer who is not swayed by uh, narrow considerations. He will definitely give us justice. So if you if you earn that kind of a reputation in the first few years of your service, of course you will not be posted in a district in the first few years. It will, it will take time. So by that time, you should develop a reputation for yourself. And when the people know that yes, this officer will give us justice, they will support you. They will be with you in whatever decision you take. The uh, you, know, you you had to buy their loyalty by your own action. Please do that. And we have all done that. And after that, whatever decision you take, they will support you. And the best way to deal with the law and order situations is through the opinion makers of the society, through the leaders of the society. It is never done only through police. Police is they are with you, but uh, you can deal with a um, law and order situation much better if you have the uh, opinion makers on your side. 
you uh, that is why uh, the district magistrates they form peace committees in the district they take uh, take out uh, marches through the streets they themselves lead the march they go to people's houses and talk to talk to them they talk to groups they all these things are done to make the people feel that yes you can be trusted by your, by their trust as early as possible okay hello sir good afternoon sir you, you must have, you must have read about read about these things in your gs4 paper yes yes gs4 paper deals with these type of situations yes you should be considered you they should consider that you are ethically right morally right you are not even if you may particularly you may belong to a particular religion or a community but you are not affected by those considerations that impression you have to create okay next to host sir oh meghna yes good afternoon my question is related to same sex marriage if in case the board quotes international best examples and tells why why should it india learn from them then how should we answer sir Give me, give me an answer. Uh, give me an answer. Okay. Right. So I'll try, sir. Okay. Uh, I will tell him that, um, sir. In my opinion, uh, different countries have started their journey at different points of time. The sociological setups and the dynamics of various countries about relationships, marriages, have been different. And India, at this point of time. has reached a position wherein the honorable supreme court has accepted uh, the, uh, the the decriminalization of same sex relationship going forward uh, in accordance with the societal aspirations we might reach a point wherein we'll accept same sex yeah. marriage yeah that, that is what i also mentioned that we we probably we may not re we have not reached that situation probably mm -hmm. okay some some of us may think that we have reached that situation but majority of us may not think that we have reached that situation so we had to go by what is acceptable acceptable to the society as on today that okay. can change that can change society by by the time your generation uh, comes up and in the decision making level uh, probably things might change my generation may not have been happy with many things which are happening today but we yes, had to accept but your your uh, uh, generation may be comfortable with it yes sir change things change and we also uh, are prepared to change and nobody nobody is against change but mm -hmm. then change cannot be revolutionary i don't think a, a revolution can take place in india any time in the near mm -hmm. future we are, we are, we cannot have revolutions we can have gradual changes okay, okay sir and sometimes and history also tells you that revolutions have been very very uh, disastrous sometimes you know russia had undergone a revolution france had undergone a revolution has it really helped help them mm -hmm. go to society go to history also wherever okay. revolutions have taken place uh, the society has not accepted it uh, easily society had to change Uh, hmm. sometimes uh, sometimes it may be more disastrous than the revolution itself mm -hmm. yes sir. it happens after the revolution may be more harmful than the revolution mm -hmm. okay yes sir thank you so much sir right so i have a doubt sir uh, so i have a doubt okay 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 so okay. okay one one at uh, a time okay okay so it's okay. related with that uh, same sex marriage issue uh, only so yeah. my uh, opinion is that uh, same sex marriage is just brings with it a lot of rights as well and for example many rights legally they are being provided to the spouse as a result of this marriage institution and yes. these rights are deprived to the same sex couples yes this is you are right this is this is a, this is a major issue i am happy that you have brought it up see this is a major issue suppose let us for argument say, say that uh, we uh, legalize same sex marriage yes, okay sir. now two persons started living together they no naturally they cannot have children yes sir but they adopt a child okay yes sir has the society come to a stage where 
that child will be accepted. There are children of single mothers who have found acceptance in our society. But same type of acceptability will there be in the case of a couple brought by and I am a child brought up by a same-sex couple. Think about it. Society, my view is that society has not reached that kind of a maturity level. Uh, now, but they have at the same time they have accepted single single mother children. All right, sir. Okay, because uh, because that there is no marriage there. It's a, it's only an adoption. Adoption is accepted, but marriage since marriage has not been accepted, the children of that marriage, of course, not from that marriage, but children adopted by that couple may also find it extremely difficult in our society today, even if we give them legal protection. So how but we... So, uh, yeah. so what about the couples who are already living? Like we are deprived, they are already living. So we are depriving those rights to those couples who are already taking a stand out of the society. So... No, they have that, they have the right. They have the right given by the that uh, um, they have the right of the third gender. Yes, and, sir. So we have decriminalized. Yeah, no, it is not. It is decriminalized. So, no, but it, that is also not accepted right by the society right now. But yes, we have right. decriminalized section three seventy seven. Yes, three seventy seven is still not accepted by society. But nobody will uh, take them to a court. They, they may beat them up in the street. That is happening. That is happening today. That will also change gradually. But they have a right to challenge it. If suppose somebody beats them up on the street. They can go to the court. They can seek the protection of the police. That right is there with us, with them. And that is happening also. That is happening with uh, many people. But I am not saying that the situation is uh, so comfortable for them. The third gender or the same sex uh, uh, couples, they are not enjoying full social uh, freedom as envisaged under the law. It is not happening. That is why uh, we know that uh, we have not matured enough. There's, we have a long way to go now. These problems will continue to be there. Their children will not be accepted by, by the society. They will have a stigma attached to them. So should we encourage uh, continuation of that stigma for the children or not? That is a, an issue which uh, now only the parliament can decide it. The Supreme Court, most likely Supreme Court will not decide it because this is the question which you asked is very difficult to answer. Of course, you can in a UPSC interview you can answer it, but you cannot answer it in a, in society. It's difficult. In UPSC so, interview, you can. If someone asks opinion, so can we like give give these points because, uh, yeah. or sh should we say like that right now the society is not ready? Like, can we say yeah. that same sex society marriage can be the society will keep changing. We are passing through yeah. a transition. We are passing through a transition stage. Things will change. Things will change, but till that time, this type of problems will remain in our society. We have to live with it. Sir? Yes. Sir, last, so last, can we suggest... Last question, like... I think I will have to stop now. Last question. Okay. Uh, sir, uh, there is an issue of, uh, also related issue of changing the gender. So that yes. will also crop up, no? <clears throat> you no, know, that, is, that is allowed now. There is no problem about changing gender. No, no. No, no, sir. Like someone identifying a man identifying as a woman or something. Uh, that's what's happening that, in that, yes, European that, countries. Yeah, you are right. You are right. This has created problems. There have been many cases where men have uh, competed in uh, women's uh, men have put on, put on female, sports put on challenge. Put female clothes and gone to the female toilet. Toilet men for females and molested uh, girls there this has happened this is happening yes. today also but then again the so society has to find a solution law will not find a solution to this problem law will not be able to solve it how can how can you prevent a third gender person from wearing a uh, cloth of a female and going to a female toilet unless you have a third gender toilet i think we can have a third gender toilet sir maybe maybe i mean we cannot prevent them but maybe. legally maybe. we can have three maybe but uh, how, how can you prevent a 
man yes. man putting on uh, woman's cloth and going into a female yes, toilet how can you prevent that yes implementation is an issue but we can provide it yes. implementation is an issue yes yes sir thank you sir last thing sir can i ask sir oh, okay i think i already okay okay fine no no sir, more I, uh, sir, last uh, thing sir Sir, just like we are telling that when society will be uh, means uh, will change enough, so we are waiting for the society to change. But sir, is it is it possible that society means uh, means if in case of sati or in case of sir uh, widow marriage at that time also society was not ready to ready to adopt the change, but at that time also law was imposed on them. Yes. So even so, that imposition has helped helped it does help. in it does definitely that, help. When you see law, law, law can become a social uh, change agent. Mm -hmm. Law can become a change agent, but then uh, the change has to come from within the society. Law can yes. only law can only suggest the direction in which the change has to take place. But the society so, has to change in, on its own, and that has happened in the case of widow marriage, widow remarriage. In, in, in that line, don't you don't you think that sir? The legislation should brought should be bring first, and thereafter we should wait. For this. No, it, this, this, this has to come on uh, their own. Yes. Hello, sir. Uh, law, law can law keeps on changing, and law is changed with a with an objective. To, see, like a dowry prohibition, the law is there for a long time, but how many people are obeying it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So these type of issues, please be aware of these type of issues and that mm. that how when you give an answer, try mm. to put all these things in your uh, mind and then mm. come up with a good answer. Okay. okay I, I cannot give any answer for this type of question, but you have to think about it and come up with good answer. We will, uh, as we go along, when we have our group mocks, more more such questions will come and then we will discuss in detail. Uh, right okay. now, I'm, I am closing it. Uh, okay, sir. thank you, sir. Please, I, thank I, I, you, thank you, sir. Thank okay. you for your time and the discussion. We have a group mock tomorrow, 10 30 okay. to 1 30, sir, would be there. So I think uh, we can conclude this session, right? Okay. Oh, thank, thank you so you. much. Have a good thank day. You. Have a good day, everybody. Yeah.